The Field of Dreams is real, and it exists in Coos Bay, Oregon, where the husband and wife coaching team of Kevin and Allie were concerned about the lack of youth sports opportunities in their community and decided to do something about it. So they started Coos County Youth Sports, a nonprofit sports league that grew way faster than anyone expected. And today, you guys are gonna help me quite literally shine some light on this operation. But in order to explain to you how this whole project came together, I need to tell you a little bit about me and what it is I'm trying to do with this whole project. For those of you that don't know, my name is Casey Liddell, and a few years ago, I started this YouTube channel. And it focuses, for the most part, on my towing company here. And when the channel started to get popular, I had quite a few people reaching out asking if I had a Patreon account, like most YouTube channels do, because they wanted to support what I was doing, as we've always kind of had the goal of helping people. But I was never really comfortable with the idea of people giving me money when I was already making money off of either the business itself or off of the YouTube videos of the free off-road recovery that we do. So I fought having the Patreon for a long time. But eventually I had enough people consistently asking for it that I went ahead and I made one and I put the link down in the description below there and just never mentioned it. And the other thing I also did was I never took a penny out of it. So for the last couple of years, that account's just been sitting there basically accruing those monthly subscriptions every month while I tried to figure out what exactly I was gonna do with that. But recently I had a great idea of what I wanted to do with it. See, my favorite thing about this whole YouTube channel and the income it provides is that it allows me to help people in a way that I wouldn't be able to just from the business income. And I realized I could use that Patreon money to further that idea. So what we do is every month, usually every month, last month we skipped a month, but that also allowed us the bigger budget to do the project we're doing in this video. Uh, the idea is every month, whatever the Patreon brings in, that is our budget to do something for someone or some organization the next month. So if it brings in $1,000 in a month, I have $1,000 to help someone or some organization the next month. It's running about $3,600 a month, I think it is right now, that it brings in on the subscriptions it has. But like I said, we skipped a month, plus it had some left over from a previous project where we didn't use the whole budget, which gave us a little bigger budget for this one here. So now having this larger amount of money than I usually do sitting in this account, I wanted to do a bigger project. So here in Bend, the town uh, I live, there's a nonprofit called Every Kid Sports. And what they do is they find grants and donations and stuff like that to pay the sign-up costs, uniform fees, stuff like that for underprivileged kids so that no kid should have to sit out playing sports due to financial reasons. And that is something I can definitely get behind. So I reached out to them and asked if they had any sports organizations they work with that had some bigger needs. Uh, a little more than just the youth sign-up fees and stuff like that that they normally deal with. And they put me in touch with Kevin and Allie over at Coos County Youth Sports. So Kevin and Allie sat down with the other coaches in the league and they kind of put together a wish list of what the league needs to continue to grow and expand and serve their community. And I'm reading through this list and I gotta be honest, like most of it, I don't know where to get it. They need a scoreboard. I don't know where to get a scoreboard. I don't know how much scoreboard costs. Uh, they need some other things that are much more sports specific that I don't know anything about. But one thing I saw on there was light towers. Uh, they rent light towers in the fall and in the spring so they continue playing their season when it gets dark outside in the shorter days. Now being an equipment guy, working in the construction world and all that, light towers are something I know. And something I also realized of everything on their list, that was the only rental item on the list. So with that being a little more in my wheelhouse of knowledge and with it being a rental, that's a reoccurring cost every season, that that's money they're saving that they can continue to put back into the organization for other projects, season after season after season, instead of being a one-time donation. So I got on the internet, started looking for light towers. I found a couple of rental companies that were willing to sell some. I, I couldn't get all four from one company, but I got two from a local company here in Bend, and the other two from a company over in Eugene, that they were actually working light towers in their rental fleet, so good to go working units. So since most of you are probably about tired of me talking, let's go get those first two light towers. Let's work our way over towards the coast and uh, let's go make a difference. Good morning from the side of the highway where we're uh, pulled over just checking on uh, the load here. We've got the gooseneck trailer hooked to the back of the wrecker. Got a couple light towers on it. We're gonna put two more on the back here and then we're taking a road trip over the coast. But first, we gotta stop just up the road here and pick up something very important. Uh, we've got the trailer here hooked on. I don't have my hitch adapter for this yet, so we've got it uh, chain slung here and tied down. I know you might think that looks kind of sketchy, but it's actually super stable and a very good way of, of pulling a gooseneck without a hitch if you have a wrecker. So we're gonna uh, head down the road just a little bit farther and pick up something I've been really missing. I got my light bar back. It's uh, 
A little worse for the wear, but I bet you it will still work. I got the, the on off switches inside there somewhere. But uh, we get home, we'll try it out. Uh, a gentleman named Mark and his wife were driving, saw it on the road, had seen the video, <laughs> stopped and grabbed it for me. So um, on the way, I just pulled over here, took a hike up the hill to their house. <laughs> That is awesome. So yeah, we got to uh, do a little repairs to it and I bet you it'd be good to go. Over the mountain and back through the tunnel we go. Hold your breath. Woo! Hey, for those of you playing along, I'm going to drive through that tunnel slower and slower every time I got to do it just to help increase your lung capacity. You're welcome. So we made it over here to Eugene. We're at C&E Equipment Rental. We're picking up the second two light towers that we purchased. These two came from Pro Rents and Bend. These two twin ones there are going to be here from C&E. Uh, all four fresh oil changes, full of fuel. Everything works like turn the key and they can start getting used. So we get these tied down and then uh, keep heading west. We are here. Let's get pulled in and see uh, what we got going on and where we're going to want to unload these things. Check that out. We made it here to Coos Bay. We're with Kevin and Allie of Coos County Youth Sports. And uh, we got the light towers here and we're at, this is the field of dreams, it is. literally. Like it you is. guys built it and they came. So uh, what did you guys do? And like, how did you do this? We saw a need um, that wasn't being quite met other in other places and we had already coached and everything but we saw the room for growth we could we could really do some stuff differently and fundraise and by doing a lot of the work ourselves we could we could grow it bigger and we did so a couple seasons ago uh well what year 2019 2019 uh, we started our own and then i think we were a couple seasons in and then and then COVID happened so we, we've only taken one season off and then when we came back, we doubled in size. We had, a lot of people just wanted their kids to be out and about and doing busy work. And so we went from about 250 kids to about 500. And so <laughs> where it was okay, we could all fit on one small field here or like maybe two small fields. Quickly we outgrew that and had to find places. And so then that comes with, it's dark at practice time. And so what do we do? But we went for years where we just had a couple teams and, and we practiced in, in the dark. Because most of our practices are at 5 and it, at this time of year it starts to get dark around 6, 6.30ish. We are out of light by 6.45. <laughs> we would put glow sticks on the kids and just make it work. <laughs> so, uh, But yeah, we, we saw a need in the community and it's worked out really great. Almost 500 kids again this season. All right, so we're gonna get these untied. We're gonna get them lifted off of here with the wrecker, which is why we brought the wrecker. We're gonna get them set up here on uh, the Field of Dreams over here and light this thing up. One of you wanna be the cameraman? Gus. Oh what? man. It's, oh, it's, oh, uh, it's recording, just pointing at what's happening. Okay. Here we go. Too nice. I feel like it's scared of dropping it. Yes.
beer over there? Yeah. yeah. Is that normal? Oh, mm -hmm. for here, yeah. I mean, we haven't really been here this late. Okay. We don't see it very much. Oh, down over oh yeah, because you have to go home early because it gets dark, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, 6.30, dark already. There you go. Uh, too dark to play soccer, obviously. So we're going to use light power set up, light these fields up, and uh, see if we can extend your guys' playing time a little longer. pretty dark. <laughs> Not for long. Well, it will be for long because these things, these lights have to warm up. So we'll get it started and they'll slowly get brighter and brighter. Oh boy, is it sloppy. Yeah, thank you guys so much. This is gonna affect thousands of kids. And not only does it help the kids in the community, it helps the parents to get kids here and feel safe with lights on. Yeah. Instead of running around with those well, things, so. I love what you're doing. I very much thank you for letting me and all my friends on here be a part of this. And hopefully this serves you for quite a while and you can just keep growing this and growing this. Yeah, thank you very much. You're a rare breed. Uh, you're awesome. Thank I you try. so much. Seriously, thank you. Okay, now we're going to head to Every Kid Sports, the organization that makes, well, connected me with Kevin and then helps you guys out with getting kids signed up. Correct. So that more kids can enjoy this. So we're going to head over there, see what they do and how you guys can help them help even more kids get to come out here and enjoy stuff like this. All right, we're back over in the much sunnier weather in Bend with Michael from Every Kid Sports. Every Kid Sports is who I reached out to on trying to find an organization to do something with that we did and they put me in touch with Coos Bay U Sports. So since you know it way better than I do, how about you explain like who you guys are, what you guys do, and how people can help support what you're doing as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we're Every Kid Sports, and we essentially pay for sports registration fees for low-income families. So kids and families come to us, and if they want to play basketball, baseball, football, whatever sport they want to play, they come to us, they register on our platform, we approve them, and then we get funds in their hands, and they can go and register uh, with whatever sports leagues they're, they're, they're looking to play. So how can people help donate to you guys so that you can help more? Yeah, kids? great question. And uh, just so you all know, uh, you know, sports registration fees are, are the most expensive part of the whole sports landscape. Uh, you can come to our website at everykidsports.org. There's a donation link up top. And just to give you some context, this last season we had over 200,000 families attempt to apply to our program. Oh, wow. we, we only had funding for about 5 to 10% of those kids. So there's a, a ton of need out of there. So and, there's plenty of room yeah. for more donations. Yeah, ab absolutely. More, <laughs> yeah. more and more donations. And and I want to say too, it's it's not just about uh, playing sports. It's about the, the, the whole impact of what sports does for a kid. So whether it's uh, their social, emotional, learning learning teamwork uh, the really life skills that they can take uh you know into their into their adulthood so i'll leave a link to all that down below huge thank you to michael and his organization what these guys do and uh, if you can pitch a few bucks their way it'll make a big difference here back home everything's parked and put away and disconnected and i know from some uh, uh instagram comments earlier there's uh, quite a few people interested in how i 
hooked a gooseneck trailer to the back of a wrecker with no gooseneck hitch so if anyone wants to see that uh, at the end of this video I'll I'll put a clip of that it'll kind of be like the end screen closeout thing but uh, everything's parked and done and I cannot say thank you enough to the patreon supporters who make this happen you guys are literally what makes this happen I get a lot of the credit for it because I'm the the face that's there but the reality is you guys are the ones fueling this and the reason it happens so thank you I cannot say thank you enough for putting me in the position to be able to do what we do for other people it means more to me than I could explain to you on here and I I'm excited to see how much farther this goes and how much we can do with this um the the recovery stuff the off-road recovery the towing stuff we do on this YouTube channel that's great and all I, I love doing it um we'll continue to do that but what excites me most about this channel where it's going is what we can do with this Patreon project and you guys are the reason for it now for the regular viewers who aren't on Patreon you guys are important in all this too because you guys watching is what has gotten me the views to have the following to be able to have the Patreon and get the support that I do that makes this happen. So thank you to you guys as well. If you want to join in on the Patreon and be part of this and part of this difference we're making, it's as little as a dollar a month. I made it as cheap as possible so that everyone can afford it. Uh, all of that money goes to the projects we do. I take none of it. There's no like salary or admin fee, nothing like that. Like that money is used to help others. That's what we do with it. And I would love to have as much support as possible on this um, to see how far we can take it and like really make some difference in the world. And also if you want to support Coos County Youth Sports, I'll put a link to their website down below and I'll also put a link to Every Kid Sports. Like I said, they're a local organization here in Bend, but they help kids all across the country. Great cause, great thing they do. So that link will be down there as well. Both of those organizations, if you've got a few extra bucks to throw their way, again, more appreciated than you know. So uh, I think we're going to wrap this one up here. We'll go show how we did all that shenanigans there. Again, I cannot say thank you enough for the position that you guys have put me in. Thank you. Okay, for those who want to know how to pull a gooseneck trailer for the wrecker that doesn't have a gooseneck hitch, uh, this looks a lot more complicated and goofy than it is, but uh, what's really happening here is there's two hooks. I, I took the hitch tube out, so it's open tube. This hook is holding it up and forward same thing is happening on the other side so those two are coming from each side and got it hooked so that keeps it this way up and against here and those chains just wrap around and come up and drop into here so it's pulling down into here over that's what's got it in all reality if I had this fully retracted so that this head can't spin that's enough for this to go down the road of course safety chains but like as far as carrying it down the road that's fine but since this is so light and it's out on the end of this, a good hard bounce could pop this up over here. Not likely, but possible. So I have, I'm just using the slack end of our chain that's holding the load and hooked it into this bottom hook here. Grabbed a binder up to the top on each side and those binders are holding it down into those chains. Now, problem is that limits your your turning that would be allowed by these so I just bump this out a little bit to where the head can pivot and now these also pull the head back and forth so I turn everything here stays the same and it pivots on this head here instead of at the the hitch so that's really all we got going on the other thing I did is the safety chains of the trailer itself I have up here into the safety chain slots on the head and then I just put a bungee cord on there to keep tension on it so it couldn't pop up out of there which I doubt it'll do but you never know. Oh, and I also have the breakaway uh, cable installed. So in all reality, it's just these two chains holding it up, these two binders holding it down into that, and then your safeties. And then up here, we've got this section here is a converter from the seven round, like commercial style plug to the seven blade RV style plug that most, you know, non-commercial style trailers are. And then this section right here is a wireless brake controller so that I have trailer brakes on what I'm pulling so I can pull either commercial trailers or non-commercial trailers and have all the lights and brakes and everything and then I just got the cord ratchet strapped here so that it is held in place all nice. So that is how I pulled my gooseneck trailer with no gooseneck hitch.